Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, on behalf of the executive board of our university, I welcome the representatives of our national government, the provincial government, among others today here, the uh, Queen's Commissioner, Theo Bovens, also present, the mayors of the city of Maastricht, Zittert, Geleen, Kerkrade, Venlo, Landgraf, and Meersen. A warm welcome to representatives and guests of the Hustings Foundation, represented by Dr. Frenet and Rabobank Maastricht and, and the surrounding Heuvelland, I don't know what this means in English, the hill country, in the person of Mr. Kotians. On behalf of each of these organizations, two outstanding young researchers will receive an award for their dissertation today. I welcome the representatives from foreign governments, in particular the Republic of France, Azerbaijan and Luxembourg, as well as others. A warm welcome to representatives of our partner universities and our business partners. And to all our master's university staff, welcome students, representatives of student clubs and study associations. A especially warm welcome to our alumni, graduates who are now ambassadors of our university, this region, and this country. But last not least, I want to welcome Luc Sute, our new Rector Magnificus, at his first academic ceremony on the occasion of the opening of this academic year. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we live in exciting times. And let me share with you some of the very exciting comments made by the Minister of Higher Education. She stated explicitly that the autonomy of universities has an extremely high value, both for the society and the government. She also praised the necessity and contribution of fundamental research for progress. Finally, she expressed, also on behalf of the whole government, her sincerest thanks for the extraordinary contribution of universities to the knowledge society. By now, you must ask yourself if something happened in the Netherlands while you were away on summer vacation. Wasn't there a certain tension in the relation between universities and the public sector? Wasn't there a sentiment to invest less in fundamental research? And wasn't there even a certain mistrust of the performance and dependability of the higher education sector, even leading to the installation of a review commission as kind of academic super accountants to look after our performance? Well, let me resolve this confusion. I did not cite the Dutch Minister of Higher Education here, and I avoid the word, unfortunately, but her German counterpart, who has made these statements in the context of a recent anniversary of a scientific institution in Germany. I chose to cite the remarks of a minister from a neighboring country mainly for two reasons. First, to illustrate that higher education policy varies between different European countries, and secondly, to express concern that universities appear to be less embedded and sometimes even less appreciated in this country than in other countries in Europe. Now, it would be very easy and too easy to be now critical of our government for setting the wrong priorities. They have a difficult task to respond to the current crisis. I make this point because I think that we as universities also must take charge and responsibility to come out of our comfort zone, especially in these difficult times. Because in difficult times, it is even more important to community, uh, communicate with our environment, both in the private and public sector, and to reiterate our value proposition as academic institutions, but also to define the values that we adhere to. That's why my talk is called The Value and the Values of Knowledge. So what is the value proposition of our university? Let me summarize this in three main points. First, educating and training the professionals of the future to build a sustainable and economically healthy knowledge society. Secondly, conducting fundamental as well as applied research whose results will address societal challenges. And third, being an economic motor for our region and creating added value together with our partners. Our new strategic program, 2012 to 2016, named 
inspired by quality, addresses these issues in detail. It describes our vision as well as the necessary ways and means to maintain our quality and improve as an institution which at the age of 37 is still young, but has made already incredible progress in this relatively short time. It is important to maintain these dynamics by keeping the spirit of a young and innovative university. But let's look back on our value proposition. Education and training of professionals for the knowledge society was my first point. Let's look at this in a little more detail. A lot has been said about our slogan, leading in learning, which is catchy, but also can lead to misunderstandings, as it is to some an arrogant statement. To me, this motto does not describe the status quo on which we can rest. No, it is rather the iconic reminder of the daily challenges that we must face if we wish to continue to be an innovator in the learning process and in the education sector. In this context, we will also in the future build on our great expertise in problem-based learning and will continue to invest in innovation in the learning process. But talking about the value of education, the question in the end is, what is happening to our students after graduation? How are we performing in terms of employability? Just as banks, companies, and even governments must show their shareholder value, universities should also be transparent to show their added value openly to our public shareholders. And the exercise we just had with the review commission was very helpful to really come to these evaluations. Our research institute, ROA, has been one of the leaders in assessing the success of our graduates in the labor market. In their graduate survey 2011, they showed that roughly six and 11 years after graduation, 93 to 95% of our graduates are employed. 85% have a job in their field of academic study, and 84 to 87% work at a job higher at university level of year higher, and most importantly for us, even after six and 11 years, 85% would choose again for study of, at our university because they believe that the education they got here made them fit for a competitive job market. It is very reassuring that our educational programs provide a safe future for our graduates in terms of employability and skills. Although there has been much discussion about the so-called Langstudierersregeling, particularly in these pre-election times, a well-functioning university provides an educational context that helps its students finish their studies in an appropriate time frame, while at the same time giving them sufficient space for extracurricular activities. Consequently, Maastricht University has not only a very high bachelor success rate in the Netherlands, but also one of the lowest percentages of the so-called Langstudierers in the country. By the way, I was myself in Germany a Langstudierer, and I still somehow managed to have a reasonable career. <laughs> now, let's move to the second part of our value proposition, conducting fundamental as well as applied research whose results will address the societal challenges. A lot has happened in the Netherlands in the last year. Top sector and innovatie agendas, preparations for new rounds of European funding, such as Horizon 2020, and this against the backdrop of a situation which I would call the Dutch paradox. On one side of this paradox is the extremely positive reputation of Dutch research and excellence performance indicators, with the Netherlands being, for example, in the absolute world top in publication output per scientist, on the other side of this paradox, you have the fact that the combined spending in research and development in the public on the private sectors in the Netherlands is lower than, if we uh, calculate it as percentage of the gross national product, lower than in other countries and lower than the average of the EU. It appears that even in time of crisis, other countries invest in research and development more than the Netherlands. If this is not changing soon, it will without doubt not only lead to a certain brain drain, but also have a negative effect on Dutch research performance. And I think the speaker of today, Franz van Fucht, will tell us also what is behind this and what are possible uh, ideas for the future. The idea behind the Dutch top sector is to cluster research activities around themes where the Netherlands is traditionally strong and to foster a close cooperation between industry and universities is in principle the right way. 
and as Maastricht University and Maastricht University Medical Center, we are very actively participating. On the other hand, we can be worried about the progress in this area. Tax breaks and redistributing funds, for example, from the NVO in the classical Dutch concept of een cigar or eigen dose, is possibly not enough to jumpstart public-private collaboration. Again, we should look at better examples in other countries, even in this difficult time. How is Maastricht University performing as a research university? In the just recently published Shanghai ranking, which has a strong focus on research performance, among other things, Maastricht scores between the 200 and 300 top universities in the world. In other rankings, we are between 100 and 200. If you look at this, you can be depressed because eight to nine Dutch universities score even higher, but is this disappointing? Not if you consider that basically all Dutch universities are present in the ranking, which consists of the top 1% in the world, and not if you consider that we are a young university that has no broad beta faculty. A fairer comparison in this context is our top 20 position in the analysis of the 100 best young universities under the age of 50, a position that we got to, somewhat also to our surprise, largely because of our international profile that we know, but also because of our research performance as a young university. To use the potential of this still young university, we have decided to approach research innovation in a truly interdisciplinary way that ignores the border between faculties and the borders between research institute, between the academic hospital and the Faculty of Health Medicine and Life Sciences. The first progress surrounding our new research areas, learning innovation, urban globalization, and quality of life have been presented in this morning's symposium. With the further implementation of these programs, we will be well prepared for the coming funding rounds of the European research funding programs, such as Horizon 2020. Now to our third value proposition, being an economic motor for the region and creating added value with our partners. In these days, Maastricht University and the Maastricht University Medical Center are among the biggest employers in Southern Limburg. We should realize that this by itself is already a major contribution to economic stability in this region. On top of that, by now, we have more than 16,000 students which contribute significantly towards the local community and economy as it well to the improvement of the demographic perspectives in Limburg. Even the populist discussion from last year questioning the taxpayers' costs for international students has been turned around by the appropriate action of Staatssekretär Zalstra to ask the Bureau of Economic Policy Analysis to calculate the returns of this investment. The study clearly indicates that the costs for financing students during their university time is more than compensated by the tax payments by the by now more than 20% of international graduates who stay and work here, leading to a yearly net gain of roughly 740 million euro for the Netherlands. This amount can be increased even more if we can retain higher numbers of international graduates and our triple helix activities in the region have just this goal. That's why we are committed to do even more to contribute to the economic and social well-being of our region. The motto of the day, the art of networking, summarizes this approach. Positive change can be best achieved by partnering, and as a network approach in the context of open innovation, a truly content-oriented collaboration of industry, local governments, and the knowledge institutions is key. We, as a network university, must be a trustworthy and dependable partner in this endeavor. The successes of the last year that we have achieved together, the progress in campus development in Camelot and on the Maastricht Health Campus, the increasing of your regional activities, for example, by our joint plans with the RWTH Aachen, our common engagement with the province and the cities of Limburg, together with the relevant industrial players such as DSM in the Brainport 2020 initiative and the Limburg Economic Development Association are, as I think, remarkable. And our regional network is growing even further by our increased engagement on the campus in Fenlo and the first initiatives to establishing a smart service valley in Heerlen where we can contribute. 
As Maastricht University, we are still the research university of and for Limburg. A research university, though, with a special attention for education and as a trustworthy partner in regional development. In parallel, we are improving our international networks, partnering with institutions. We show common interests and a common profile in Europe and beyond. In the end, Maastricht University is both an internationally renowned research university, but also a world-class regional university. So in summary, our value proposition seems reasonable and perhaps even more convincing than value propositions from some banks, companies, and even, as I dare to say, as a non-voter in this country, some political parties. Is this reason for optimism? Basically, yes, but also there's reason for concern. Concern that our message still does not come across in an increasing polarized political climate, Concerned that less and less investment in higher education, research and development will hamper not only our performance, but also the status of the Dutch knowledge economy and knowledge society. And we are concerned that we lose the race for the best brains to countries with another investment attitude in higher education. We therefore need to repeat and repeat that we continue to provide one of the most precious goods for social stability and economic well-being knowledge. But I do not want to talk only about value, but also about values. Values that our graduates will take on into their future professions as critical and constructive citizens, ambassadors for the Netherlands if they leave the country, as academically trained but empowered with the necessary skills to deal with resolving societal challenges. Graduates with a tolerant, open, and inquisitive mind with sensibility and sensitivity for our surroundings. At the core of this, of course, are also our institutional values. Commitment to innovation, trust, being a good neighbor also to our partner institutions here in Limburg, such as the Open University and the Hochschule Saut, dedicated to social and societal commitment, and despite all risks and threats on the labor market today, be a challenging yet pleasant place to work and to study and that is probably the biggest challenge in these times. I am, however, convinced that we can master the storms to come if we keep building on this, not alone with our networking partners, which are here today in so great numbers, as we saw during the Netwa Network Plaza event this morning. In the end, this makes me very optimistic. I think together we can progress. With your support, we can also cherish as a university. And if we develop further as a university, this will be also good not only for the city Maastricht, it will also be good for this region. And in the end, with our international profile, with our dedication to societal value, it will be also good for the Netherlands. And this is my message for you today, much shorter than last year. And uh, I thank you for coming, being here today, being our partner and showing your support. This is what we need to go into a good future, even in difficult times. Thank you.